Hello and welcome back to the studio. We are here for part two of the Camaleonda sofa project. So keep watching if you want to get that iconic Camaleonda shape and learn how to make a hot cross buns of a sofa. Enjoy! Now that we have our base constructed, it's time to line up that upholstery foam. I used a high density foam that was four inches thick for the top. And I don't know about y'all, but foam is expensive. So I made sure I measured and measured again. I ended up cutting this one in half so that I would have a little bit of excess on each side when I started carving. And again, I am using my upholstery scissors in the most official way. <laughs> Same thing around the sides, again, measuring in advance. And I always try to use my tape measure at the top, middle, and end to make sure my lines are straight and not raggedy. I only used a one inch upholstery foam around the sides because I didn't feel like you needed as much cushion and I was trying to save my coins. <laughs> When you're using any spray adhesive, just be extra safe. I've had so many close calls, bad experiences. Make sure to ventilate and don't even sleep in the same space while it's curing overnight. Just be overly, overly cautious. Gymnastic skills encouraged, but not required. <laughs> When you're using the spray adhesive, you want to spray it generously on the wood side and on the foam side. I usually let it tack up for like 10 seconds or so and then place it. Now it's not very forgiving, so you want to place it exactly where you want it the first time. And if you do need to adjust it, you want to work quickly because it will start tearing up your foam. <laughs> and do the same thing all the way around and just cut the excess when you're done. If I were to do anything differently in this project, it would be to invest in a actual carving knife because this was so difficult and this plus my upholstery scissors made the process very, very long. I found this tutorial from Sailrite where you basically hammer a screw into a mason jar top and it makes the best carving tool. You screw it back onto that mason jar handle and you have the perfect way to soften your edges. I sketched out these rounded shapes as a guide for me to get these really nice corners that give you that camaleonda shape. I went in with my upholstery scissors just to shape up initially where I wanted to go um, for the form, but as you'll see soon, we are going to do way more carving than this. And again with my mason jar tool, just softening up those edges as a starting point. You want everything to be flush with your sofa so it helps to look at your carving from different angles to make sure you're not missing anything and then again softening it up. Once you have your initial form carved you're going to measure again mine were at 34 and a half you're going to divide that by three and that's where you're going to mark your grid lines. This is how we're going to create that modular sofa that's so iconic. <laughs> Once you've drawn all of your lines at the cross points is where we're going to add our holes and that's how we're going to thread our paracord through and add the rings and all the fun things. You can drill at this point of the process but it's actually easier if you wait to finish carving but you want to drill in all four holes on the top and around the sides. You'll extend each grid line down the side of every ottoman and mark your holes in the upper third. I did eight inches from the bottom. Line it up across to make sure they're even and then cut out the excess where your holes are and then you'll drill here as well. You'll do this on all four sides. Good morning and we are back. We're back at it again with the white couch, not the vans. And today we are finishing everything but the sewing. Everything that goes under the fabric that will be sewed. It's happening. Even if I have foam all over my apartment by the end of it. We're doing it. Candace is coming over later to help me with wallpaper and she's bringing her vacuum. Blessings are on the way. Glide your knife alongside each grid line. 
and take your upholstery scissors and cut out the holes and make them a little bit bigger. Then you're going to cut at a deep angle alongside each grid line with your upholstery scissors. I like to take my knife all the way down to the wood base so that my fabric can really sink into this couch and you basically want to keep carving it till it looks like a pack of buns. So I like to take this at a deep angle and really round out every edge. This is like a really good angle to see how to create that iconic shape and then always softening your edges once you get there and it helps to be at every angle. <laughs> Highly recommend vacuuming as you go because it gets super messy. And if your couch doesn't look like a pack of Hawaiian rolls, I don't want it. <laughs> this is another step I definitely recommend doing after carving because the dimensions will change, but it's super easy to cut MDF by hand if you need to, which is what I ended up having to do. And you can cut off the corners and then round off the edges with your electric sander. Place your MDF on top of your foam and start carving out your shape. I used a six inch high density foam for my armrest and I used my MDF as a guide to help me carve out this shape. At this point in the process, I was getting a little free with my knife work. I don't know if I was more comfortable or I was just over it at this point, um, but I basically just used the pictures of the Camelionda as a guide for my shapes and used a mix of the knife, the scissors, and the mason jar tool to really soften up all of these edges to get the shapes that I wanted. And I really just eyeballed it to make sure they matched up. For the seat backs, I used a six inch foam on the bottom and then I tried to cut a six inch foam in half. Don't recommend it. As you can see, it's really jagged and uneven. And I used a memory foam topper and it actually made it nice and soft, but it took so much longer to layer these up and then carve it. With the same process, you just use the glue on the wood MDF base and then on the foam and you basically just press down each layer and add them on top. Thank you.